Anthony, so great to see you. It is great to be seen. Uh, yeah, March 16th, 2022. You want to get to it? Uh, I'm going to go get a tan in a couple hours. How's that? Uh, that's not good because I'm jealous. I'm Anthony. Welcome to No Vacancy Lives. That's my friend Glenn. You're watching the number one show in hospitality. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening from wherever in this great planet we are tuning in from. I'm Glenn Hausman. That's Anthony Mercury. This is No Vacancy Live. Anthony, episode 601. Much more rewarding than hitting 600 yesterday, don't you? 601. You know what? I think somebody should give you an award in Florida in uh, sometime in April. What do you think? I, I, You know what? I'm a little bit busy, but I think maybe May, oh, May. 14th yeah. would probably be a little bit better. Yeah, May 14, somebody should congratulate you on a great job. I hope so. I hope so. And hey, listen, if anyone wants to give me an award in April, I'm all up for it. But Anthony, that's exciting because on May 14th, we're being uh, recognized by SCAL um, and the uh, SCAL International's U.S. and Canada um, divisions for um, what we've done in tourism and hospitality to help uh, keep everybody uh, focused during the pandemic. How amazing is that? Yeah. And now that people are getting back to it and they're busy, um, I, I listen, we have great guests every single day. But uh, I think now is more important to be on the show. So if you're, you're wanting to be on the show, not that we have lack of guests, thank God. But um, now's the time because there's a lot changing. You know, I'm getting calls for speaking gigs and, you know, people are like really confused. I'm going to do something for a brand I won't mention, uh, I think next week. Yeah. And um, they're not confused. They're just ready for a um, uh, new perspective that is going to last for a long time. Everybody right. thinks this new perspective is going to, and they know it's here to change and they're, they're really embracing it. So, uh, it's one of my favorite brands and I look forward to talking to them. So Good. there's a lot to talk about. Um, yeah. more importantly, you know what I want to talk about? I don't. Your, 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 your spirit today. Your spirit feels good to me. It does. That's good. Cause I'm totally faking it, dude. I am crabby as F and I just want to be back in bed today. So I love the fact that, uh, the smoke and mirrors are working great. <laughs> that is untrue. But, hey, you know, that video I sent you that we're not allowed to show for uh, copyright yeah, reasons. We, are, we can talk about it, though. Yeah. We, we, uh, I asked Suzanne and David to see if we can find the founders of that product to come on our show. Mm -hmm. Because it's really a product I haven't seen before. I don't know. Somebody sent it to me. And it's a product that basically cleans the entire hotel. And it looks like it's really um, – it understands how to open the door. It understands how to go around furniture. It understands how to clean the toilet bowl. Mm -hmm. Now that that could be just the video, and it's the technology is not there yet. But if the technology is there, I'll be the first one to promote that that robot. Listen, we all need something like that. It'd be really awesome to not have to be as dependent on human beings doing all of that cleaning. That way, those folks can take on other jobs in the in the hospitality universe that are much more customer focused in people's uh in people's site listen let's call it what it is it's hard to find housekeepers because they're yeah. they're doing uber or they're amazon they're going back to school or they're working the front desk right so it's harder and harder and harder to find uh housekeeping and so this will help support the housekeepers as well as not having to strike listen when you open the hotel your number one priority is you have to find good housekeepers Right. Yeah, ab absolutely. And uh, I'm hearing that the name is Somatic. You can get, get find out more information at GetSomatic.com. We are not being paid for that. Can you show it? Can you show it? Uh, I'm going to, I could probably bring up an image of it. Let me give me right. one. No, we are not re promoting this. We are not. I just thought it was cool. It's the yeah, first yeah. time I've actually seen right. a robot able to clean. Uh, All right, bring this up right now, guys. Share screen. Chrome tab, little robot guy. Hitting the and I slept a lot of hours. Why do I have bags under my eyes, Glenn? Um, um, I don't know, man. I've got permanent bags under my eyes. That's why I'm glad that I wear glasses when we're on this show. Yeah. So I can't see. Not only that, I'm getting old now. So the bags under my eyes, I'm getting bags under those bags right <laughs> now. And it's really discouraging. So, so, you know, this would be really helpful in those big bathrooms on uh, – on the, on the highways, you know, mm -hmm. the service bathrooms on yeah. the highway, that would be really helpful to constantly be cleaning those bathrooms. Yep. Because that's a lot of labor. But I, I don't know. I mean, this the, the demonstration seemed like it really, really uh, 
worked. And you yeah. don't have to worry about them using the same rag on the toilet as they do on the <laughs> desk. Uh, I remember that. One of the best episodes ever of Hotel Impossible. But Anthony, uh, Darren is saying, hey, I'm waiting for an appointment at the eye doctor. What are those clear frame glasses that you uh, that you were wearing at Hotel They are in my backpack ready to get, go to the airport. So they're but down do you know there. what the name of the company is or something? I do. I do know the name of the company. Do you would you like to know the name of the company? I think Darren would like to. Uh, the name of the company is Swestflix. And just to talk about my glasses for a second, mm -hmm. uh, you know, when I was, you know, getting ready to kind of work my images for, for TV, yeah. mm -hmm. I was looking for glasses and I spent hours upon I hours bet. in the glass place near my house. Yeah. And they were so lovely, but like, I don't like uh, attracting, believe it or not, I don't like attracting attention to myself. So I didn't want glasses that people would be like, oh my God, look at those glasses. Um, so I got the clearest cleanest looking glasses you can find that mm -hmm. i thought were the cheapest glasses in the store i was like cool i just want these these are pretty these are these are basic they're nice you barely see i'm wearing glasses i went to the counter and she goes you have good taste i go watch because you just picked the most expensive glasses in the store. <laughs> i go these simple plastic crap things she uh, goes she goes those are the most expensive because they're sweats flex i guess is, is a yeah. popular brand anyway so those are my it reminds me uh it reminds me of the machine that goes bing do you remember that? The most oh, expensive uh, machine in the hospital, Monty Python and the Meaning of Life. All okay. Right. Uh, that. You know, I know no references you ever speak of. You know that, right? That's too bad. I'm sure a lot of the uh, a lot of the folks. Oh, I'm sure they do. Listen, there's a lot of geeks out there. I'm just not one of them. <laughs> All right. So before we get to our guest today, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to uh, to speaking with uh, Anissa Arshad. She's the, uh, the, the co-founder and global head of Blue Ground for Business, which focuses on service apartments, which we are looking at behind us. Before we get to her, I just wanted to mention Choice Hotels announced today that they're transforming the Suburban Extended Stay Hotel brand into Suburban Studios and um, really trying to reinvent it um, now. So that's pretty exciting to them. They've got turnkey development support and flexible prototypes to help bring it to market quickly. And it just shows again how important extended stay is for the strategy of all the major hotel companies, Anthony. Yes, sir. It's, you know, Staybridge Suites and Residence Inn, you know, they, they were in the forefront of it. And now everybody is, um, you know, everybody's getting on board because they know it's a profitable model. Yeah. Speaking of that, people that focus on stays that are extended, Blue Green for Business, Blue Ground for Business. How are you, Anissa? Great to see you. I'm great. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, well, welcome. We're very excited to have you. We've never met before. It's always exciting to have somebody new on the show, especially since we're uh, over 600 episodes in at this point. Anytime we get somebody new, it's super exciting. So uh, welcome. Thank you. And congratulations on the award nomination and on episode 600. It's very yeah, we're, we're pretty yeah. excited about it. Yeah, you know, I've been pulling him along for a long time. And, uh, you know, and they're recognizing him, which is really, really good. And uh, it's about time they recognize him. Uh, but, you know, it's been hard pulling him. He's, he's about 160 pounds, 170 pounds. Mm, and would, that would be nice. Said, I been 600 there. episodes. <laughs> I've been him for 600 episodes a lot. So, Anissa, are you in New York? I'm not. I'm currently in Chicago. So I've oh. been living a little bit of the blue ground lifestyle. So over the past um, two, two years, years, I've lived in New York, Los Angeles, and, and now back in Chicago. So I'll tell you what, not only did you co-found the company, but you've been living with the company. That's pretty awesome. That really tells me that you believe in what your, your product is all about. So before we get into the specific yeah. questions, tell us a little bit about Blue Ground for Business and what makes it maybe a little bit different from other service department companies and residential hospitality companies we've seen emerging. Yeah. So Blue Ground is really disrupting the way people live by giving them the flexibility to live you know, where they want for however long they want in cities all over the world. Um, what's really different about Blue Ground is just the diversity of our portfolio. So we, in, in any given city, like in New York, for example, we're in over 150 different buildings. So you have so much choice for what you want. 150 different buildings in New York yes. City? Yes. So we, the, our operating model is we take anywhere from one to 20 units in a building in existing residential buildings, which allows us to really have a lot of coverage and diversity of, of building types. Wow. Um, so that's definitely a key differentiator between a normal service department building, which is, you know, right. 
one or a few buildings in a city. Right. And uh, that's important for folks that don't understand uh, this model out there. Um, yeah. That is fascinating to me. You're actually, you know, partnering with the uh, the landlords of the building. Um, and I understand that you could either do a revenue share or some other types of financial arrangements, but that has gotten you to be so spread out. That's great. And Anthony, I'm thinking if I'm in a major city, how convenient it is to be that I could be closer to where I need to work or do whatever instead of having to go to that one building that might be 30, 40 minutes from where I need to Well, be. I always had this dream of yeah. getting on a cruise for a year and yeah. going to different ports around the world. This is kind of the same thing. It's like you can say, okay, for the next 12 months, I'm going to spend a month in Italy, a month in New York, a month in L.A., wherever, all over the world. It's kind of the same kind of thing. You you just kind of – you're there, the, the – um, there's, it doesn't feel like a hotel. It's not a hotel. It feels like your residence. And um, you really get, you know, full, a full package apartment. You don't have to worry about moving. I think it's great. And plus, you know, in a lot of these big cities, New York especially, it's it, it's too expensive to live in New York. I mean, even the rich people are like, man, it's expensive to live in New York. The billionaires, the billionaires are pushing out the millionaires. Yeah, that's why I'm in Chicago. But <laughs> to your point, even in a, a, a specific city. So last year, my husband and I decided that we wanted to spend the year in Los Angeles. It's a big city. We knew we wanted to explore it fully. We weren't sure you know, if we would ever be able to live there again. So right. we spent a month in Santa Monica, four months in Marina del Rey, and then we really wow. hadn't explored the other side of town. So we moved to West Hollywood for another four months. Um, and we did all of this with a newborn, um, really because... <laughs> Blue Ground offers is just such a the the experience is so seamless and you know while the the neighborhoods differ and the building types differ the apartments themselves like everything is very consistent. Right, and I guess you need to have that sense of uh, consistency, not necessarily aesthetically, but with uh, amenities and services and stuff like that, because you do want aesthetically to look of the location that you're in. But Anthony, how cool is that? Because we talk a lot here, uh, Anissa, um, about that digital nomad and. And during the uh, the pandemic, people were saying, that's going away. And we're like, no, it's going to get even bigger and more important. And now we're talking about you don't even have to stay in one building in a city. You could explore different areas. And, yeah, and, I, and I also think, that. Glenn, it's that, you know, nobody stays with a company for 40 years anymore. No, people seem to be less attached to stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you yes. know, growing up, we were all attached to stuff, right? Mm -hmm. You know, when Sandy came through and, and took most of my stuff, took all of our pictures and videos and stuff, you know, you start to kind of, uh, it hurts, but you start to realize, you know, the memories that you're making and the experiences you're making. And again, I've traveled late in life and I've traveled 40, 48 states, 50 countries in the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. And, um, I remember their feelings, their experiences. I don't bring anything home from the road, anything, because I don't want to. I don't want to have those things to remember, remind me that I've been all over the world. I want to remember the memories mm -hmm. of that. I don't want to sit my. I want to wear my house. I want to feel comfortable and detached from everything else. So for me, like this is perfect. Like if I ever decide for a year to go away, I'm calling you. Yeah. No. This is a trend we've been observing, not just millennials and Gen Z, but you know even you know, the older Old people generation, like answers. Yeah. they don't want to commit to a 12 month lease. They don't want to commit to buying a furniture. They're just a lot, you know, you feel very liberated when you're, when you're not committed to anything and you have the flexibility to move right. around. So it was the same with us. You know, when the pandemic hit, we moved in with family. So we weren't committed to a 12 month lease, which really gave us the flexibility to move around. And so this was the perfect solution for us. You know, and that, that's a really good point. People don't want to commit anymore. And there's no reason to commit anymore. You know, it's like you want to invest. OK, you can buy a piece of real estate upstate or you can buy stock or you can even buy a house. But it doesn't mean you have to stay there 12 months a year. Now, if, if I would rent a, an apartment and I had to do a 12 month lease, but I decided to to rent with you for, say, six months, how would that work? Do I need a deposit? Is it uh, you know, very much more expensive than that monthly? How does it all work? Yeah. So our pricing does vary based on the duration of the of stay. So we do have guests who stay with us for a year or longer, and it becomes you know much more affordable and competitive with getting that 12 month lease. And if you do stay for a month or three months, you do pay a slight premium. Um, but when you factor in, you know, buying furniture and, you know, committing to everything that you would need to furnish an apartment, it ends up being pretty close to break even. 
And then in terms of the flexibility, like you can always extend your stay. And if you decide that you want to leave early, you just need to give us 30 days notice and, and you can leave early. How much are you not happy with that apartment and want to move to another apartment? Yeah. So we are definitely very supportive of people moving within the portfolio. So if someone decides that they want to move to another location, another blue ground apartment within the city or to a different city, um, that's totally fine as well. Right. So one of the things that we're hearing, Anissa, is um, a lot of the cities are saying, hey, you've got to come back to the office. You've got to work. And people are like, uh, yeah, no, thanks. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> Goldman Sachs said everyone has to be in X, Y, Z date and only half the people showed up. Right. Yeah. So this is opening up great opportunities for folks to be where they want to be when they want to be there. So what are the changes that you're starting to see now when it comes to businesses and yeah. thinking about placing their people remotely as opposed to in a building at a cubicle no one wants to sit at anymore? Yeah, definitely. So, you know, the reality is a lot of companies are returning to office, especially the big tech companies. So, you know, a lot of the demand we are seeing is because people have to report back to work. And, um, you know, whether it's a rotational program or summer internship or it's you know a relocation and the company is giving them a housing allowance, all those traditional use cases for corporate housing still exist. Um, in terms of like the, the digital nomads, people who can work remotely, that's a huge segment for us. It's 25% yeah. of our guests. Wow. And these are people who are, you know, moving around the world where, you know, and working from wherever they want. And they really want, you know, what's important for them is making sure they have really good, you know, home office space and like a, a really reliable place to work, which we provide in all of our apartments. Right. Yeah. And um, it, it, it's, it's, Fascinating to me. I'm looking at I'm looking at your your the website right now, and you can save uh, companies 30, 50 percent less expensive than a, a quality hotel located in great uh, locations in newly built or recently renovated uh, buildings. That sort of thing all makes sense to me. All right, so I got to ask you then, uh, Anissa, 25 percent is de dealing with that digital nomad. It's probably a lot easier to get a deal with X Y Z big bank company and they could rent it for a year and bring people in and out as they choose. But those individuals must be harder to find. What's your strategy behind reaching out to them? Because 25% is pretty impressive that you find that many folks. Yeah. So two thirds of our revenue is actually direct to consumer. So it is with individuals. And then a third is under my business, Blue Ground for Business. So it's, you know, B2B. With the individuals, you it's hard for them not to find us. So, you know, if you're in New York and you go on Street Easy, Zillow, Airbnb, you know, any real estate classified website or you just Google furnished apartments, New York, you will find us. Right. So um, that's how we're getting, you know, in touch with those consumers. Right. Anthony, so what are the standards? What are uh, is there any uh, one, two, three standards you have for every apartment? Yeah. So I think the standards we have are, you know, the quality of the building. So, you know, we're, we're only focused on major metropolitan cities and within those cities, high quality residential properties. Mm -hmm. Most of our properties are, you know, in the U.S. with five to six large property management companies where we know the standard is high and the servicing is great. And then um, within the units themselves, you know, we want, you know, nice finishing, good views, you know, anything that a professional would want when they're staying in a service department. And then the furnishing is also very consistent across the board. So, you know, whether you're staying with us in Dubai or in Zurich or New York, it's the same mattress, it's the same kitchen equipment, you know, it's the same. Oh, that, that, that's interesting. So when you yeah. lease the apartment, whatever you do to get that apartment, uh, you then go in and you furnish it and set it up the way you the way you want it so yeah. so if i so say i had 10 apartments in new york city mm -hmm. and i said okay you can take my inventory mm -hmm. and but all the 10 units are furnished you would come in and take out all the furniture yeah so we don't rent furnished apartments so we would request that you remove the furniture and then we would furnish it with our own furniture that we own understood right we lost your we lost you on video there there you are she's back i think oh, there you are all right great that's it that's interesting so we're, we're talking about the mattress will be the same, but as you can see in the pictures, the couches won't necessarily be the, the same. How does right. all of that part come together? You have an in-house design team that tries to create something yeah. that's locally relevant? 
Yes, we do. We have in-house designers who, you know, they design each apartment individually based on the layout, based on, you know, the location, you know, the look and feel of the building and the finishings. So that's why there is a little bit of a difference between both of your apartments. So if you have one apartment in the building, how does that person get the key? Is it all on their phone? Yeah. So it, it's, the instructions are on their phone, but the entry method does vary. So if it's a building in New York where there's someone, you know, there's a front desk, there's a door person, they would probably gain entry through through that person. Um, if not, we would put a lockbox. And then we also have the option of sending someone to meet them if they want, a, you know, in-person meet and greet. Um, right. So we have the option of contact list, but then, you know, for some of our corporate clients, they really want um, that someone to meet them and show them around. But now, is it, are you close to getting, um, you know, keyless entry where it's just on your phone and you, you know, you can send me a code and you, and I go into my apartment. Yeah, we do have that option in, you know, I would say less than 10% of our units right now. It's primarily because we're in these existing residential communities right. that may not have that technology or may not approve of us changing the locks, but it's definitely something that we're trying to push for. Um, it, it's just much better. And, you know, Blue Ground, it, it's, it's a tech enabled company. So everything else we do is tech enabled. So the entry method is definitely a priority as well. So when you say you're a tech enabled company, what does that mean? What are some of the things that you're doing? At, at yeah. Then you ask really good questions. I'm having to, <laughs> I'm having to ha carry you less and less every show. I'm a master of the obvious here. Uh, yeah. But just thank God you're here to look to look out for me in case I screw this up. Sorry, Anissa, go on. No, no, no. Um, you guys are funny. So the entire guest experience is tech enabled. So you're on our website now. You can see live availability, real time pricing. Right. You can book it within a few clicks. You right, can let me hold you there for one second to give yeah. our audience a little bit of an understanding. The service yeah. department industry has traditionally been living in the 17, 1800s, right? Yes. You'd have to like you know, fill out a form and send it in and hope that, uh, you know, a, a carrier pigeon brings back a positive answer to how much you'll pay and when. Yes. And some of these companies are finally, and you guys are way ahead of this, having all of that technology enabled. So you're on equal footing in ease of bookability as a traditional hotel concept. Now, please continue. A hundred percent. Yeah. I think people who have never shopped for a service department before are like, oh, real time availability, 3D tours, pictures, that's normal. But when you look at the dinosaurs, they don't have that. They're like, mind blown. Yeah. I can't believe you're actually doing stuff. Right. Yeah. And then, you know, when our guests are staying with us, you know, the, the primary method of communication with us for any of their needs is through our app. So the guest app is crucial for them to get, you know, information about their apartment, get access, request, you know, towels, cleanings, anything oh, cool. that they may want. Right. Uh, excellent. Um, Battle Cat says, uh, hey, I really want advice on selling cheese. I would recommend you watch our cheese broadcast, which is going to be coming up in about two hours. Hopefully it won't be too cheesy. I don't know what kind of weird spam that is. But uh, you know what? No, it's interesting. When you said you want to sell cheese, I'm going to kind of pivot here because <laughs> no, it, no, no, wait, because I am sure when you were a young girl, you weren't thinking about selling, you know, this type of service, right? So whether you're selling cheese or this type of service, so it's a really good question. Like yeah. that when you were 12 or 13, what did you want to be when you grew up? I'm sure it wasn't selling apartments. Or would it, you know, in this, yeah. you want to be maybe an entrepreneur, would you want to be in business? Yeah. Right. And how did you come to this? So that's interesting. Yeah. yeah. Funny enough, you know, I grew up in a very entrepreneurial family and, you know, my, my, my father, my grandfather are really into real estate. So mm -hmm. I definitely had exposure to the real estate space early on. Um, and then my first foray into entrepreneurship was actually after business school, mm -hmm. where I joined like a German internet conglomerate that was launching internet businesses all over the world. And they hired me to launch the Zillow of Africa. So mm -hmm. I, I actually went, you know, I, was, I had lived in Nairobi before, but I moved back really? to Nairobi and I launched this business model in 12 countries in Africa. So I was selling, you know, online real estate classifieds to brokerages in Africa that maybe, you know, people didn't have smartphones. So I sold something very hard. So then coming to this, when I connected with the founder of, of Blue Ground and, you know, understood the business model, I was like, this is going to be a piece of cake. I could have used this right. several right. times in my career. So uh, the name Arshad is um, more of an Arabic Muslim type of a name, right? So does that mean your yeah. family came from North Africa originally, or did you guys 
move to other parts of Africa from somewhere else. I'm interested in how you, you got yeah. to Nairobi and stuff like that. That's yes. fascinating. I know a lot of hotel guys that have a history in India or Pakistan spent yeah. family time in like Ghana and a lot of other African countries. Yeah, good question. Yeah, so my, my family is originally from Pakistan. Funny enough, no one had ever lived in Nairobi, and my parents were not happy that I moved there because right. it's not the safest place. So I, I don't have any family there. But when wow. you know, but living there as a South Asian woman, like people yeah. assume that you're from there just because it is quite a diverse place, right. and there's a big Asian community. Fascinating, and I, that probably informed you being a digital nomad yourself in a lot of ways. I, you may have gone into an office every day. I don't know, but. Yeah. Did that help you germinate this particular idea of combining travel with that real estate insights that you had? Yeah, you know, I can't take credit for this idea. So our the CEO of the company had already started the business before I joined, mm -hmm. but it, it's definitely like the moment I connected with him and he told me what he was doing, it just really resonated with me that this right. is something I could have used probably like seven times right. when I was moving because I moved around a lot. I lived in many different places. Um, and every time you're just starting from scratch, especially in emerging markets, the service department industry is not as developed. So you really don't even have that option. Hmm. So I just well, really saw the product market fit. One of the things that seems to translate to everything you've done is selling. You know, I'm not a good salesperson. You you, you know, you, you want to work with me? Great. You know, I don't care. And I'm a terrible salesperson. And Glenn is better than me. But in business, you know, I've had to be a salesperson. I've had to you know, through my career, you know, but I don't think of it as selling. Like I won't sell a product. I'll sell our hotel. I'll sell myself, but I won't sell a product. So when you want to sell cheese, or you want to sell a hotel. The number one thing I would imagine you're really good at is selling. Yeah, I enjoy it. I think it's something that you, you know, you can always improve at, but I am definite. I definitely enjoy it. And I've learned a lot over the past few years. Yeah, yeah for sure. Uh, I, all right. So where is the company at right now yes. in terms of uh, growth? And I'd love to hear a little bit about some of the challenges you faced over the last couple of years, if there were a lot of challenges, because being yeah. in big cities and stuff like that, that must have been complicated. So what was the story of how that all happened and how you reset everything and are now moving forward? Yeah, for sure. I can give you a high level of the company as well. So, you know, the company is, is nine years old. We've raised $258 million and we have 6,000 apartments in 18 cities across the Middle East, Europe and North America. And we're adding like two new cities every month. So we're growing pretty rapidly. Wow. Um, in terms of the pandemic, definitely a challenge for any company in the real estate hospitality space. Um, people were not traveling internationally, people were not traveling for work. Right. Um, but the silver lining for us was just the the way that this whole digital nomad trend took off and the fact that, you know, a lot of people, even within a city, did not want to commit to a lease. So a right. lot of our demand came from people who were already living in New York or San Francisco, ended their lease and just didn't want to commit to another, you know, year long lease. Right now, it's interesting because here, in, you know, in American culture in particular, um, we've been sold since post World War II era on you have to have the home with the white picket fence and all of that kind of stuff. That's not necessarily the way that people want to live their lives. For me, it never occurred to me that there were other options out there. But my children, who are turning uh, eighteen next week, I have twins. They see the world in a totally different way. They don't want to be tied down here to a suburban community. They want to do what you're doing. They want to travel um, everywhere. But as you're expanding to these different places every single month, yeah. how are you finding the buildings to partner with? I mean, obviously, someone could find you on the website, but that's probably not how you're getting most of your, your new business when it comes to opening new locations. Yeah, I mean, initially, you know, if we have existing relationships with large, you know, in the United States, for example, when we launched Austin or we're launching Miami, we leverage our existing relationships with property yes. management companies. Ah. Internationally, we do go online and we look at, you know, real estate listings and we contact mm -hmm. the owners and explain what we do. And, you know, they can see our track record. They can see our presence online. So we do we do approach people who are maybe individual landlords as well. Interesting. What are some of the cities right now that you're finding that companies that you work with, such as Google, Adidas, Tesla, Sony, Amazon, and stuff like that are focused on placing their people? Yeah. Sorry. I'm just going to restart my camera. Can you see me? Yes. You're all good. Okay, great. So um, Austin 
is definitely a, a place where we're seeing a lot of demand um, with the big tech companies. So yeah. there's a lot of movement there. And um, that's definitely one that stands out where from the moment we launched that market, Blue Gun for Business, like we were booking the majority of the units there. Wow. Uh, now, when you say Austin, I immediately think of Nashville as well. Have you thought about getting into uh, Nashville at, at all? Yeah, we've thought about it. I'm not sure it will happen this year, but it's definitely on our radar um, for sure. Yeah, it's uh, it's almost like you have to. Anthony, you're muted. It's interesting when you say Austin. I don't think of Nashville. I think it's to me, it's two different countries. I um, yes, but they both have similar things. Everybody loves those cities. Everybody's moving to those cities. There's tons of hotel development in those cities, and they both have great live music. No, no, I, I, I agree. But it seems that there's a lot more um, diverse business coming into Austin and especially yes. tech business coming into Austin. Yes. But uh, it's it's absolutely fascinating um, how things are changing. And you're one of the companies that is it you know was changing before it really started to shift. And now you're kind of right in the sweet spot of like, we're ready. We're ready to go. It's like it's, it's great timing, you know, uh, mm -hmm. where there's luck, preparation and opportunity meet. Right. So. Yeah. Uh, it's exciting to see your growth and, and, you know, thank you so much for being here. Yeah. Well, I got one more question before we wrap up, uh, Anissa. Um, yes. I'm curious as to when you're talking to all these major companies, how are they feeling in particular about this new era that we're moving into with that, uh, that pandemic hopefully being behind us? Yeah. I mean, I think everyone's excited that it's over and, you know, this is actually a category that's more relevant than ever for them as an HR or a mobility team, because even for consulting firms, for example, they're on the road, but it's hybrid. They're not at the client site every day. So right. their employees need to be able to live in a fully functional place where they can work, they can cook, they can do laundry. So we're more relevant than ever, you know, especially for our corporate clients. And but you said what, that it's over. So can we can you have that in writing, please? I don't. Because it seems like there's <laughs> stuff happening in Europe. It seems like things are happening in Europe that's starting to make people nervous. Yeah. Is, is there? That. So yeah, but but you said it's over, so I'm good. All right. We good. can end there. <laughs> All right. Um, how about a good plug for how people could find Blue Ground for Business before we let you go, Anissa? Yeah. So our website is actually the blueground for biz uh, the blueground dot com. And uh, on our website, you can see all of our inventory in, in the 18 cities I mentioned. Why Blue Ground? Where did the name come from? Yeah, so Blue Ground is a layer of the earth where diamonds are found. So, and it's also, you know, ground is where homes are built. So, I like it. I like it too. All right, Nisa, <laughs> thank you so much for being here. We thank you so much it. for having me. Pleasure. Lisa Arshad, co-founder and global head at Blue Ground for Business. That was so much fun, Anthony. I love talking to all of these interesting different companies that are uh, emerging over the last 10 years or so. Yeah, and they're adapting. And um, I have my new background now. I'm using this as my background. I love this background. <laughs> I do too. It's a really good one. All right, everybody. We've got, uh, I know you've got a plane to catch. I've got meetings to go to. And while we're at those meetings, why don't you guys download some old episodes on our audio version of the podcast. Listen on Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, all of those places that you like to download your shows, whatever they are, we are there too. He's at Anthony Hotels. I'm at Traveling Glenn. And my uh, podcast pick after no vacancy would be uh, check out uh, Omnibus with uh, Ken Jennings, host of Jeopardy. Um, and that's a really good show. They talk about all of this obscure information that I absolutely love. Where is it? What is it? It's a it's called Omnibus. It's, Where is uh, it? it's, it's a podcast, podcast, an audio podcast with uh, with that guy and John Roderick, who and they're both out of Seattle. So it's uh, interesting, fun. Oh wow, like it. Um, I watch Jeopardy uh, lot, lots of times a week. Cool. I don't because it just makes me feel dumb. You know what? I got 14 right last night, so I felt really? good about myself. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. That's impressive. I got more right than one of the contestants. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. I love it. I would love to be on a game show one day, mostly as its host, but if I couldn't, I would really love to uh, to get to that. Well, listen, if, if, if you have books, musical, and science, I'm going to lose. If you have sports, history, and geography, I'm probably going to win. Right. I like it. Maybe we could go on a show and like team up because – We've got complementary knowledge bases there. Yeah, in the category Star Wars, I'll cry, and you'll be like, "Yes." They'll say baseball, and I'll be like, "Yes," and you'll be like, "Oh my god, yes!" And I, you know what? It's probably right. We'll probably do right. Probably and listen, do right. as long as the question's about the 1986 Mets, I might have a, I might have a shot there. Um, okay, um, who played second base? Uh, let's see. I don't remember now. Fuck. Um, All right. 
now, 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 I, now that I ruined our, our ratings. All right, hold on. Could, hold it, on. could it have been Wally Backman? I was just going to say Wally Backman. Damn it. <sighs> I remember Howard Johnson was there, and this is before I got into the hotel business, and I was yeah. like, the guy's named after a restaurant I used to get all you can eat fish at. <laughs> it's funny because I waited my whole childhood for Mets to win the World Series. I was sitting in my top bunk in – Keesla Air Force Base, uh, Biloxi, Mississippi, yep. when they won the World Series, and I was so depressed. I'm sorry to hear that. I loved it. Nothing better than uh, Mookie Wilson, Game Six. Uh, All right, if buddy. you don't love if you don't love Mookie Wilson, you should never, ever, ever like like watch a sport. Like just, Mookie Wilson is, is, is was the coolest moving human. I agree, man. I loved him, and I always felt bad for him and Lou Pinella because anytime they'd come out on stage, it'd be like Boo or Lou. And it was no, like, I loved it because they knew they were where it was. I, I felt badly for it because it sounds like they're getting booed. <laughs> yeah, and my favorite was back fact, people used to say I played baseball like Lenny Dykstra. Yeah. Um, but then like Lenny Dykstra's brain blew up. Uh yeah, I don't know what happened to him. I loved him. Then he wound up ripping everybody off and serving some time uh, up in the big house. Oh yeah. well, what are you gonna do? All right, everybody, thanks for being here. Remember, you've got one life, so blaze on, Ed. Be kind to yourself. See you tomorrow.